So uh, it is a burden to society and the, you know, why would we want to treat aging associated diseases? Because we want to uh, recoup that loss of function because just living a long time in a wheelchair isn't as fun as living a long time with your phys physical capability. And then why would we look at gene therapy? Because gene therapy has the ability to scale and become affordable. And when I talk about the vector delivery that we do, that's a long lasting gene therapy. So for a patient who is old or who doesn't like pills like me, um, you would just need an injection maybe once every 10 years. And that really is a differentiation factor. Right now, the cost of gene therapy is expensive, but if that was affordable, most people, especially people who are aging and in different ways and, and wanted to be stronger but couldn't afford every therapy, uh, you would want to give them something that they ha wouldn't have to redose over and over again. Okay. So you took these therapies some time ago. In fact, you were, well, you took some last year as well. I took so, some this year. You took some this year. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just I'm like on the recovery from that. So I guess we would call that a recovery period. It doesn't really feel like much of a recovery period, but uh, I, I'm still uh, in the, within one month of, of doing that. So this is, you know, still the uh, phase of, um, you know, a capsid release, although most of that is gone within two days and, um, getting off of immune suppressants, let's say. Okay. How are your, why do you, uh, oh, I was just thinking, why do you need immune suppressants if you have gene therapy? Oh, that's a good question. And I led you right into that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we use immune suppression in uh, gene therapy, especially after you've already had uh, your first gene therapy. Uh, we're the first company in the world that is able to redose humans and show upregulation of the benefit of the gene therapies. I don't think any of the major pharma companies have ever done it. Uh, we've been a first to do a lot of things. <laughs> and so building protocols for, for redosing is really important to us. And then, you know, on our research and development side, we're working on cytomegalovirus. So it's a, it's a virus that exists in nature. We make it so it can't infect you. We make it so it delivers uh, healthy genes. And its redosability has been uh, shown in a paper that we put out in 2021, I think, with Rutgers University. But... Uh, in the meantime, because we already work with AAV, we've been working really hard to redose it. And so an immunosuppressant uh, regimen is required, even if you do a gene therapy for the first time, but we are exacting how to do it, a gene therapy multiple times and, and actually use less immune suppressant uh, to do it. And so it's pretty revolutionary. Interesting. So it, it's because of the virus that you need to suppress the immune system. It's it's actually a few things. So it's not just the the virus. Uh, the virus, remember, is attenuated. Uh, your body could see it as an invader. Uh, so that's one reason that we would use immune suppressant. Uh, the fluid in which the um, gene therapy resides in can cause an immune response as well. And then, of course, we want to make sure that those genes that are going to make you healthy for a longer period of time are not associated with any of those substances. So we want to tone and turn down the immune system so that uh, you don't have a, a cytokine response to the gene therapy itself. So you mentioned- it's not, it's, Look, it's not so much that you can't go on an airplane. I mean, you should probably wear a mask if you go on an airplane, but it's not. It, the, the amounts that they use in other diseases is much higher than we would use in gene therapy, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. So you mentioned that Brian Johnson used a different type of gene therapy. I mean, just out of interest, would you be able to explain what the difference between uh, the gene therapy as Bioviva with the, the adenoviruses and the one he did? 
Yeah, so there's 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 many ways actually to deliver genes and CRISPR. Generally with CRISPR, you use AAV, which is what we also use to deliver genes. But when we do it, we're not looking to integrate or, or affect your chromosome at, at all. When you use a plasmid gene therapy, the gene goes into the cytoplasm of the cell and the, the machinery in the cell reads it. And the cytoplasm is the, the bigger part of the outside of it. With gene therapy with vectors, it goes into the nucleus. And when you go into the nucleus, the genes get the protection that the chromosome receives. And so um, it has a longer term expression. So it's, it's a long lasting gene therapy.